You've seen that classes, objects, and actors can all be participants in the interactions shown in a sequence diagram. Sequence diagrams also allow other elements to have lifelines and participate in interactions. These elements include boundaries, controls, and entities. In a sequence diagram, a boundary looks like this. A boundary represents a user interface screen or some kind of input-output device. And as you can see, the representation in the, in the sequence diagram is a line, and to the right of that, connected by another line, is a circle. So when you see that symbol, it represents a boundary, some kind of user interface or input-output device. Another element that can participate in a sequence diagram is a controller, and that looks like this sort of an arrow that makes a circle pointing to itself. And a controller is defined as what controls the work that's done, as well as when and how that work is done. So you might think of a controller as an overseer that decides, for example, how to handle, how the system should handle a user's request. You can also have an entity as a participant in interactions. And in this context, what an entity is is some persistent element. That is something that gets stored typically in a file. So an entity in a sequence diagram is typically implemented as a table or an element in a database. And as you see here, the entity symbol is a circle resting on top of a line. And all of these elements have their own lifelines, and all of them can participate in interactions. Here's an example that shows some of these elements in a sequence diagram. This is for an online merchandising system. And we have a customer who is an actor interacting with a boundary an interface, here that's an order screen. The order screen sends a get shopping cart message to the shopping cart element. That creates an item for the cart, adds it, and then deletes the item that it created. So here we see that the lifeline for this item ends right here in the sequence. And then we have the order screen send a get cost message to the order entity. That returns the cost to the screen, which because it's an interface, shows it to the user. So you can see how these elements may be helpful in showing the precise interactions in a particular sequence.